I've woken up and I, I'm paralyzed. I just have to lie here and basically wait for someone to find me. I may be like this for hours. Periodic paralysis is a, a muscle condition where people get paralyzed after certain triggers, like rest after exercise or eating certain foods. Episodes can last anywhere from five minutes to several hours. I'm Dr. Jacob Levitt, and I'm president of the Periodic Paralysis Association. I'm an associate clinical professor of dermatology at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City, and I also have hypokalemic periodic paralysis. I'm also the patient in the beginning of this video. I wanted people to see how difficult and scary this disease can be, even for a physician who knows how to handle it. Periodic paralysis is a muscle disease, and there are a variety of forms. Hypokalemic periodic paralysis involves muscle weakness when potassium in the blood is too low. Hyperkalemic periodic paralysis involves weakness in response to a high blood potassium. Anderson to Will syndrome has the additional complication of heart arrhythmia. On a cellular level, low or high potassium alters the electricity across muscle cells resulting in paralysis. A person can be rendered helpless in minutes. It's a genetic condition that can appear at almost any point in a person's life, but commonly occurs in childhood or puberty. I was not genetically diagnosed with periodic paralysis until about five or six years ago. You can't imagine what it was like. I believe that if I had been genetically diagnosed earlier or just diagnosed in some way, that I probably wouldn't be sitting on this scooter right now. It's a severe disease and it's not recognized as being a severe disease. It is considered to be a benign disease and that's not true. This is a German patient. She's developed a permanent weakness when she was young at three years of age. She had to use a wheelchair when she was 14 years old. We made the diagnosis when she was 24 years old. We administered Inspra and potassium. She is now walking and jogging. And what is of great interest, the muscle was poorly developed and after six months the muscle mass is much more than it was in the past. I have periodic paralysis. I have an unidentified genetic mutation. I have large muscle jerking on the left side of my body and I have myotonia which is muscle stiffening. My mom and her sisters and my maternal grandmother all have signs of weakness and now my daughter is showing signs of periodic paralysis as well. My heart will beat irregularly, like it'll go bum 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 It'll go off into an irregular rhythm, and that's bad for my heart. I can't really play sports that other kids play because my heart rate will just get up really high, and it hurts my body. The aspects of of periodic paralysis for me are having um, muscle spasms during an attack or having rigidity where my body just totally locks up into place or I will go completely dead weight, totally limp. I didn't know what I really had. I had been diagnosed with so many different diseases over the years. Um, periodic paralysis had come up uh, but they weren't sure that that was it because I didn't fit the little box that was described as periodic paralysis. This is such a rare disorder and so there's not a lot of research that's done on it. And for someone like me that has an unidentified mutation, um, I'm not in the books. I first had symptoms that I could notice when I was 20 years old. Um, I didn't have full body paralysis until I was about 26 or 27 after the birth of my daughter. There have been some kids in school that have teased me about my paralysis. It was kind of hard for me because I was like, I wanted to defend my, my disease because I can't help it. I can't really help wh whether I have it or not. There are a variety of ways that the disease can be kicked into gear. We always refer to that as a hit or a crash or an attack. I normally won't be able to speak. I can't move. I can't move my arms, I can't move my hands, um, can't move my legs. 
The PPA provides convenient access to science-based information to help doctors and patients better understand and manage periodic paralysis. We provide support for patients who feel isolated and alone. It is such a rare disease with such bizarre manifestations that people feel like they're the only people in the world who have it. Through an internet, an email listserv, and through in-person conferences, we bring these people together, enable them to share their stories, and find comfort in each other. We are people who um, first of all meet on the internet, and then every two years we have conferences where our members come together and are able to interact as a group of patients, but also with our medical advisors that travel from all over the world to be with us. In 2006, everything kicked into gear. The disease just went off the rails, and I was having attacks um, often, and the attacks would last um, several hours, if not days. Much of the last few years I spent in bed. Um, simply because I couldn't walk, I couldn't move around, I was in a lot of pain. And then the uh, PPA uh, had a conference and one of the folks who I have communicated with offered a totally different type of medicine than what I have been taking. And because of her selflessness, because of her desire to see those that are dealing with this disease have a better life, she changed my life. If I hadn't gone to the conference, that would not have happened. One of the reasons I had a speedy diagnosis is I had the internet available to me and I was able to find the Periodic Paralysis Association. I was able to join their listserv, which is a mechanism for many people with periodic paralysis to visit with each other and share um, tips for uh, good management ideas. Something that someone shared from one of the conferences it made a huge difference for me in managing my periodic paralysis. And that is why it's so critical that the PPA is there and is doing what they're doing. The PPA, as far as I'm concerned, um, was the instrument that allowed me to go from homebound, bedbound, pretty cruddy quality of life, to being able to have some elements of my life back that have been gone uh, since the diagnosis. In the big picture, the goal of the PPA is to find a sustainable and effective cure for periodic paralysis. To get there, we must increase awareness, support research, improve management guidelines, and improve diagnostic protocols. We have to be around for those who are lost without a diagnosis and for their children. Thankfully, I found Dr. Frank Lehman Horn in Germany, and um, he has my blood, and he has Lauren's blood, my daughter, and he is researching to find our mutation, and I feel strongly that one day he will find it. It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack. And if there isn't a group like the Periodic Paralysis Association that can help him fund his research, then genetic research will stop. That research has got to go forward. It has got to go forward. Imagine what would happen if somebody went to the internet and typed in paralysis, and the Periodic Paralysis Association wasn't there. I want the, the children that are affected right now with periodic paralysis to have the chance that I never had. In order for the Periodic Paralysis Association to survive, we have to start creating a funding source that is going to see us through the next 20 years. I believe in the next 20 years, we are going to find ways to help people who have periodic paralysis that may make their lives totally normal. If you would like to know more about periodic paralysis, visit periodicparalysis.org. And if you enjoyed this video and want more, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. It really does help spread the word. You can view other videos about periodic paralysis by clicking the thumbnails to the right. If you have questions, just leave a comment below or reach out to us on social media. We'd love to hear from you.